Joseph Stalin is considered today a brutal man who was responsible for the deaths of millions of people. He was a man who ordered his NKVD to purge the Soviet Union of anyone who was considered a possible dissenter. The Great Purge resulted in the executions of millions, and many more were sent to gulags and concentration camps. But Stalin was a man who could turn on his closest friends and advisers, and his government would not be exempt from any possible action. He was a man even who would practically condemn his own son to death, and he did this during the Second World War, as he refused an offer from Hitler that resulted in his son being killed or dying inside of a German concentration camp. Stalin and his son did not get along, but Yakov Dugashvili was in the eyes of his powerful father, a traitor. Join us today as we look at the horrific execution of Stalin's son, and to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Yakov Dugashvili was born on the 31st of March 1907 in Baji, a village in what is now Georgia. His mother was Kato Svanzi, and his father was Joseph Dugashvili, or Joseph Stalin. A number of months after Yakov's birth, his father was involved in a bank robbery. They then fled to Baku to avoid his father being arrested. They returned a number of months later, but Yakov's mother by this time was rather ill, and she died in December that year, having contracted typhus. Joseph Stalin then at this time left Yakov, and he abandoned him to be raised by his mother's relatives, and Stalin shunned him, and would not come back to visit his son for a number of years. He was raised by his aunts, and was to live with them for the next 14 years, whilst his father became incredibly powerful in the Soviet Union. In 1921 he was taken to Moscow to live with his father, and this was difficult as the father and son could not understand each other well, as Yakov could not understand Russian. Stalin also prevented his boy from taking the surname Stalin, and he banned this, and the two did not get on. It is believed that for Stalin, Yakov reminded his father of his mother, and that this led to him having some resentment for him, as Yakov's mother represented a happy time for the future dictator of the Soviet Union. He lived in Stalin's apartments in the Kremlin, and he slept in the dining room. He was a boy who was kind and friendly to his half-siblings and also his stepmother, who was just six years older than he was. Yakov was interested in going to university, but his father would not let this happen to begin with. He was 23 when he was admitted, and he then worked as a chimney sweep engineer at an electric plant factory. He had, in 1928, fallen in love with Zoya Gwynya, and he wanted to marry her. Stalin was furious at this, and it's believed that Yakov even tried to take his own life by shooting himself in the chest, but he did miss. His father even made fun of him for this, and he took a number of months in hospital to recover. The couple did marry, and they had a daughter, but the daughter sadly passed away, then the couple broke up. When he got back to Moscow, he was linked with marrying another woman. He did have a son, which was born in 1938, and he took his surname. Zhugashvili then married Yulia Meltzar, a dancer from Odessa. The pair met in a restaurant, and Yakov fought with her husband, but the pair were soon married. They moved into an apartment, and they married a day before their child was born. But as the Second World War had broken out, Yakov Zhugashvili took to the battlefield. Initially, to begin with, Stalin and Hitler had signed a non-aggression pact, but Hitler would rip this up. On the 22nd of June 1941, he ordered his Wehrmacht to invade the Soviet Union, as the Nazis launched Operation Barbarossa. Stalin wanted his son to fight on the front lines. He served as a lieutenant in the battery of the 14th Howitzer Regiment of the 14th Tank Division, and he saw action near to Vibetsk. He was captured, though, on the 16th of July, during the Battle of Smolensk. He fought valiantly, however it was said that he was captured as the Germans surrounded Yakov's battery. The order was given to retreat, but Yakov did not obey this order. I tried to persuade him, but Yakov answered, I am the son of Stalin. I do not permit the battery to retreat. Others said that he was willingly given up by other soldiers, as they disliked Stalin and his government, so he was given over, almost as a sacrifice. For the Germans it was a major coup of victory, as the propaganda value of having Stalin's son was seen for Hitler as a huge boost. Stalin had issued a no-surrender order, which was well publicised, and he ordered every soldier to not take one single step back. But Stalin's own son had surrendered, and Stalin was furious with this, and he saw Yakov as a disgrace. He believed his son should have taken his own life, 
instead of being captured, and he believed he had been betrayed. But to begin with, Yakov removed his officer's signs and badges, and he tried to pass as a normal soldier, but he was recognised and was interrogated then by the Abwehr. He during this was critical of his division, he was part of, and also the Red Army, and said they were poorly trained. He believed the Red Army was not ready for war. He criticised military commanders, and said that the UK were weak and did not help. He made comments that praised Hitler and the Germans, and he was openly during his interrogations anti-Semitic. The Germans wanted to use Stalin's son in propaganda, and leaflets were dropped over the Red Army that showed him smiling with his captors. The back of the leaflet was a letter that said, Dear father, I have been taken prisoner. I am in good health. I will soon be sent to a camp for officers in Germany. I am being treated well. I wish you good health. Greetings to everyone. The Soviets tried to make him a hero, saying he was captured during heroic actions, but he was then imprisoned inside of Sachsenhausen concentration camp. Whilst he was here, Zhugashvili was visited by people who wanted to meet Stalin's son. But he was very confrontational to the British prisoners, and he often fought with them. There were offers made for a prison swap for him, and with this Stalin would refuse them, and would sentence his own son to death. When German Field Marshal Friedrich Paulus surrendered at Stalingrad, the Germans offered to swap Stalin's son for Paulus, but this was seen by Stalin as a poor deal. He said, just think how many sons ended up in camps. Who would swap them for Paulus? It's believed that another offer was made to swap Yakov for Leo Raumel, Hitler's nephew, but this was not accepted either. But on the 14th of April 1943, Yakov Zhugashvili died inside of Sachsenhausen. There are different accounts of his death, but his father in refusing the prisoner swap, particularly for Leo Raumel, was in a sense condemning him to death. One account says he ran intentionally into an electric fence that surrounded the site. Others speculated that he was actually shot by the Germans. The German record said he ran into an electric fence after trying to flee British soldiers he was arguing with. But an autopsy then said he had been shot before. So there were different accounts as to whether he was executed by gunshot or whether he was in fact a man who just took his own life. Stalin, after hearing about his death, would regret how he treated his son, and also the fact he didn't spare him, and he claimed he was a real man, and he spent a number of days mourning him. Yakov Zhugashvili was the son of Stalin, who spent his final days inside of a concentration camp in Germany. He was captured by Hitler's forces, and was then sent back to Germany, to be used as a propaganda piece. But the events of his last few days are rather sketchy, and it's not known if he was executed, or whether he died under very different circumstances but the fact his father refused to accept a prisoner swap for him ultimately condemned him to death. If he had not died beforehand, it's possible that the Germans would have executed him, and it's likely that he would never have been sent back to the Soviet Union. The son of Stalin, who never saw eye to eye with his father, was ultimately condemned by him. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, thank you so much for watching.